Hello, fellow Daz studio enthusiasts. This is Not From This World, and I want to welcome you to another Daz Studio tutorial. Now, today I want to go back and talk a little bit about DeForce. I promised a second tutorial on DeForce, and I've had a few questions about changing non-DeForce clothing into DeForce and then what to do to get the same DeForce effect. Now I have to admit that um, most of the clothing that I have these days is DeForce enabled, but I did find this dress uh, that is not DeForce, and so you have to convert it into DeForce. And so, this uh, result here, this render that I've done really quick, shows you what we can do when we have a non-deforce piece of clothing that we turn into deforce. There are some tricks that we need to understand, I think, to really get this to work well. Okay, so what I have done to start off with is I have added this non-deforce dress, it's called the bell dress, to my Milica character. And you can see um, if we click on it here, you're going to see under parameters that there is no deforce. And just to show you, if I try and simulate my picture, it's going to come up with this error. So it says no objects to simulate. To simulate, perform one of the following actions. So we have to add a deforce modifier or so on. So you can see that this is not a deforce enabled dress. And so what we have to do is we have to first enable its deforce. And then we've got perhaps a few little tricks to actually get a good render going. Now, the first step is easy, and that's to create this into a DeForce enabled garment. So I'm gonna select my bell dress. I'm just gonna go up to Edit, Object, Geometry, and we're going to select Add Deforce Modifier Dynamic Surface. Okay. Now, if we look under the Parameters tab of our bell dress, we can tell that it is a Deforce enabled uh, prop because it has a Simulation tab. So when we click on it, we can see that it's a dynamic surface. It's going to um, morph as we run a simulation. Now, in a perfect world, this would be all that we need to do. Unfortunately, when we enable this non-deforce dress into deforce, we're going to have a huge problem when we simulate. So I'm going to uh, simulate this and I'm going to leave everything as a default, but I'm going to turn my start bones from Memorize Pose on. So the girl will go into her base A pose and then she will pose into the uh, pose that I have right now. And so uh, let's see what happens when we simulate. Okay, so as you can see, we get the infamous explosion of the garment. <laughs> now, this can be caused by several things. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. Because obviously, Milica is now engulfed in this dress explosion, which is no good. So once we 
uh, cancel it here. We're going to reset it, and I'm going to show you how to fix this. Okay, so I just cleared it. Now, there are two things that cause the explosions. And our DeForce enabled uh, clothing does not explode like this anymore. I don't know what with Daz Studio updates, they've really done a good job to, to prevent this, but there's a couple of things to look for. First of all, we want to look to see if our character is intersecting the garment in any way. So, you know, is her arm touching the dress or, or pushing through it? Sometimes it can be her hair. And in the pose that I chose, she is not anywhere near touching that uh, dress. So that's the first thing you want to check is if her body in the pose is pushing through the dress, right? So, so if we have her arm here and her arm is, is intersecting through the dress like this, then that is going to be a problem, but that is not happening. Um, I also notice that when I simulate, the explosion occurs immediately. She doesn't start moving into her pose and then we have an explosion. So if you are getting an explosion immediately, uh, it is probably because of a feature or a tab on your surfaces of the dress called bend stiffness. So if I select the dress and I go to surfaces, what I need to do is, is select all of the, the bell dress parts. So I'm just going to select the first one, hit shift, and then select the last one. So I have all of the parts of the dress selected. And then I can scroll down to where I find where it says bend stiffness. Now, bend stiffness is defaulted at 0.5. So what we need to realize is this bend stiffness is going to dictate how flexible the dress is and how sensitive it is as it moves in the D4 simulation. So the higher the number, the more sensitive the dress will be to any movement. So as it folds on itself, uh, it's going to be very sensitive at a higher number. Now, 0.5 is a high number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this to 0 0.1. And that is going to lower the sensitivity of this dress. So now, when I go to simulate, we hopefully will not have that explosion because the dress will not be as sensitive to any movement as it was at 0.5. All right, so let's run a simulation and see what happens now with this new selection. So see right away, it has gone to 8% without exploding. So I think this fixed our problem. Okay, so our simulation is finished and you can see the bell dress um, really did simulate pretty well. Don't worry about what you see at the bottom. It looks pretty funky, but it's because we are seeing through the dress a little bit. So we're just seeing the back. So um, let's do a render and see how Milica looks with her bell dress on. Okay, so as you can see, the bell dress really did uh, simulate well. I like the um, 
folds and how it's sitting on the floor. I really like how one of her shoes is kind of poking out. And so this is how you can get a non deforce uh, piece of clothing to simulate in deforce. Okay, so I hope that little tutorial helped you to figure out how you can use deforce with a non deforce article of clothing. Just don't forget about that bend stiffness and you can pose and make some good renders with older clothing. All right, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. I'd really love to hear what you have to say. All right, until next time, have a wonderful day.